Hello, Brother Anthony. Brother, Brother. I have to tell you, this is kind of, I mean, it's not really personal, is it? Well, let me just blurt it out so you understand. See, I've been in South Africa for a number of years. Mm -hmm. You know? I say past a decade. But you know, let me just go to the chase. When I first got to South Africa, I purposely flew into Johannesburg because I was invited to Cape Town to do this whole long workshop. Anyway, but I purposely flew into Cape Town, but I took the bus across country because I wanted to acclimate myself to the, you know, to the land. No, I wasn't known to say anything on the bus. It was fine, great. Now I get to the Cape Town, to the bus station there, and the guy comes to pick me up. Of course, the first time I've been to the country, first time been, so you know, you got to send, you know, this for the work. Okay. So he picks me up. And the first thing he says, when I say pick me up, he met me at the thing. He, we had to go catch a, a taxi, you know, at the taxi rank, the bus stations downstairs, or whatever. So first thing he says, he says, this is Cape Town. They will run over you. He was talking about the traffic, the automobiles. He was saying there's something, how do you say it? Well, there's, some, there's something about the driving manners of Cape Town or South Africa in general. I didn't quite understand it at the moment, but then I realized, I noticed a lot of things. You got some really aggressive, aggressive drivers here. Now, see, when I first learned how to drive, uh, Chico Barrican, you know, Roberto Barrican, taught me, and the first thing he said, he said, now, you're in a thousand pound bullet. It was a little old Volkswagen, you know, just shifting and stuff. He says, I don't care what's going on out there, what the pedestrians are doing, they are always right, because they're defenseless. They have no weapon. You're in a weapon. Made sense to me. So I, you know, I guess that made an impression on a you know, 17 year old, you know, so I've been driving since, but I know it's here. You got people, I, I mean, look, let me put it this way. The last time I was in the States about three years ago or so, I was I had a culture shock because I hadn't been there in a while, and you know the cars would actually stop a distance away. And I'm like, wow, I'm not used to this because I was used to Cape Town. Cape Town, they just run right up to you, <laughs> you know. Or worse still, I was walking in Langa one time with this guy. There was a student driver, and we were just we was walking. There was a little bump. Whatever it's, you know, little, uh, they call them sleeping policemen in the, United, in the United States, but I think they call them here, I don't know, zebras or something like zebras, I should say. The car actually sped up when we were coming. You know, I just don't get it. But then I realized after being here so long, you suffer, when I say you, I mean just to, you know, not mm -hmm. you, you, but the royal South African you, you suffer from what's called post apartheid stress syndrome. Hmm. Post apartheid stress syndrome. Now, what that means is basically you're aggressive on everything because you, I don't know what you, I mean, that's what apartheid did to you. And there's been no no psychological thing. I know you had a TRC, you know, for a little bit, you know, people crying and stuff like that. But I'm talking about the whole populace needed a, you know, psychological whatever they do to, you know, make you think differently. So, there you go, bad thing. But I guess you know there's a lot of good and bad. But 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 you got to get this stuff out. You know I don't know, you got to do something. You have a lot of therapy going on. I mean right now I, I see there's a big event. It's going to happen soon. Hmm. An award ceremony. You have a lot of those too. Now I'm going to go to that ceremony. I'm going to hobnob with the uh, with the uh, influential people. I'm going to sit in the VIP section. I'm, I'm going to buy the ticket for the VIP. Now I'm sitting there so I can hop on and talk a little bit and I'm going to get to the bottom of this post apartheid stress syndrome because all the big people are going to be there. I think they even got guests from the United States, people like, I don't know, Jesse Jackson or something like that, I don't know, whatever it is. And I'm going to ask them some of that, what are you doing about post apartheid stress syndrome? These ministers are going to be there, you know. Before they get all inebriated and stuff like that, I'm going, hey, what are we going to do about this post apartheid stress syndrome? Mm. You think I'm going to get an answer? You think something's going to be done? No. Well, hey, I got to try because mm. that's all we can do. And that's the job of an audio dramatist. Audio dramatists got to try. You know, you write it up, present it, they got to try. So I'm going to try. And, and, well, I'm just going to try. Anyway, this has been a dispatch.
from the arts director of murders. That would be me, T, from the Patterson State of Trans Tibet, letting you know what I always suspect. Yeah.